What's going on everyone, Austin John Plays here, and today I'm going to be going over how you could complete your Pokedex in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. For the record, we are talking about the Sinnoh decks, not the National decks, and we are mostly talking about how to get the National decks. That's pretty much what we're doing here in this video. Okay, so in this playthrough, I have interacted with as least trainers as possible. I've interacted with the least items as possible. I didn't go to additional areas or anything else, and I have 140 seen. Having less than 140 is gonna be difficult, like you have to actively avoid things, spend no time in the underground, do none of the game to have less than 140. First things first, I want to talk about how to get Drift Bloom. Oh, I just, I just became champion. Yeah, mom, I know, I know you want me to do the post-game stuff, I'm not doing the post-game stuff until I get this national dex. All of my friends are posting videos about the end game stuff and I'm like, nope, I'm not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're doing it now. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I want to start off by saying this is significantly easier after you do the Elite Four. After you battle the Elite Four and the Champion, you don't have to beat the Champion, but encounter the Champion and see all six of the Pokemon, and then it becomes significantly easier because there's Pokemon like Melodic that if you don't see it, is gonna be very difficult. If you wanna get yourself Drift Bloom, there are three ways to do it. And by get it, I mean have it as an entry in your Pokedex. It appears here in the Valley Windworks after you completed the, the story stuff here in the Valley Windworks, but it only appears on Fridays, I believe at night. And you know how many times I've told you to not change your game clock or anything else? It doesn't work for anything in the game except for this. This is the only thing that it works for. I'm changing it to Thursday, as you've probably picked up on that. And I'm changing it to 11.59 p.m., right? So that's one minute before Black Friday. And then you wait one minute. I'm going to the Valley Windworks. Let's enter the building and re-enter the building. There we go. That's how you get Drift Bloom. <laughs> Drift Bloom is actually only had by one trainer in the entire game. It's in the Ghost Gym, and it requires you to do basic math incorrectly. I think it was like, what's 12 times three or something like that? It, it was one of those very simple math questions and you have to purposely go in the wrong room in order to find this Drift Bloom. So, there you go. There's how to get Drift Bloom. There's two Pokemon eggs that you kind of have to get in the game. This hiker right here, who's inside of Heart Home City, he's going to be giving you a Pokemon egg. It's right here. And there's one other egg that you are gifted in the game, and that's at the Iron Island, which is over here. This is a side quest of sorts that's initiated if you speak to the sailor next to the boat in Canalave City. Speak to him, you get access to the Iron Island, there's gonna be a short quest line there. You just complete that and you get that egg for Riolu. I do think that there is a breeder who has a Riolu that you can battle, but you're going there, you might as well get the egg, you might as well hatch it in your party. Next up, one Pokemon that no trainer has in the game is unknown. Unknown's many various forms are going to be located in this cave. The the town I'm in is Salacion Town. You want to go to the north and come over here just like I did, and we are going to be entering this cave. There are 28 different forms of unknown. It's its whole separate quest line and everything else. All you need to do is just enter here, run around. You're going to experience one of the unknown letters. I think that's the letter L. I mean, I might as well catch it because I'm here. You don't have to catch all 26 or 28 right now. Just the one. You don't even have to catch it, you just run away. It registers in your Pokedex, you're good to go. And uh, yeah, that's unknown. The only Pokemon who still knows the move Hidden Power. Cool. A Pokemon that there's a very good chance that you have not encountered is going to be Wooper. And for that, you're gonna to wanna to leave Pastoria City, head to Route 212. Route 212 is a completely optional route. You could beat the entire game and never ever have to go to that route. So there's a very good chance that you didn't get a Wooper from there. In addition, he's a 30% chance to show up, so he's not that rare. Just walk in the grass and you're gonna find one within like a minute or two. 
Fantastic, there's a whooper, we're done. If you haven't done a lot of fishing, there's a very good chance that you missed this Pokemon. Finneon. Route 205, I'm gonna come right here. Let's go ahead and register my good rod to the select button. Wow, that was very fast, great. With the good rod, you have a 45% chance to fish up Finneon and a 55% chance to fish up Magikarp. Nope, nope again. There we go. And there's our Finneon. I didn't have Finneon registered to my Pokedex and I also don't have its evolution Luminion registered to my Pokedex. And that's because Luminion is had by one trainer in the game who is very, very easy to dodge. Leaving Sunny Shore, head north and her. Ew. Pretty sure this is the right one. One Pokemon? Yep. This is the one Pokemon Luminion? Sure is. Fantastic. This is my third time doing this. And I didn't have Luminion in any of them, all right? So I have a pretty good idea on exactly where they are. If you did not do a lot of the honey trees, there's a very good chance that you do not have some of the honey tree Pokemon. Munchlax is super readily available in the underground, as well as Apom. I just never walked into an Apom, apparently, and Combi. So, more Pokemon than I never walked into. However, I did get myself a Burmy, but you have to have a female Burmy at level 20 for it to evolve into Wormadam. I do not have Wormadam. So, therefore, we need to come over here to this route, head on down here, and this lady is Beauty Devon. Hi, Beauty Devon. It's like, it's like I've done this before, right? She has the female one, and even though it's not the prettier of the two, and the, the, the bagworm doesn't become a full moth if it's a female. That's, it, I don't know, look up the science. It's biology, dog. By the way, I don't think I mentioned the route. The route is 214, which is south of Veilston. There is a very good chance that you did not encounter the Pokemon Cleffa, who is going to be in Mount Cornet, and is very easy to find in one specific location. So from Warburg City, we're gonna go to Route 207. We're going to head to the right. I don't think I ever fought that hiker. Nope. And since we're just changing the clock with no regard for the game whatsoever, like a bunch of heathens, we're gonna make it 8 a.m. Because apparently Cleffa is more common first thing in the morning. And I don't exactly know the cutoff time between early morning and daytime, but Right here, in this area, Cleffa is more common during the morning. There we go, there's our Cleffa. Cleffa has a 25% chance to appear during the early morning, but only 5% during the day or nighttime. Quick ball that little girl over there. How silly of me, you guys don't have both copies of the game. You don't have Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, you only have one. Well, as soon as you got your box legendary, at any point in time, you could have come over here back to Celestic Town. Oh, it's first thing in the morning in game and it's nighttime here. So this is a weird adjustment for me. Anyways, we're gonna head over to Cynthia's grandma's house. That's the biggest house. She has the biggest roof. And we're gonna speak with her. And she's like, oh, hey, why don't you go ahead and look at that book? And boom, she's gonna show you the other box legendary that does count for your Pokedex. Great. Like I said, if you did not do a whole lot of the tree stuff in this game, that's a weird thing to say, the tree stuff, then there's a very good chance that you do not have Combi nor Apom. I don't have them, so I'm going to head into this room over here, which I think is the right room. Yes, the Grassland Cave, and there's a chance we could find a Combi in here. I didn't even pick up the items, wow. There we go, there's our Combi. I kind of want to see its front model to see. I'm pretty sure they don't show up gender specific down here. And Combi's is an easy one to see because it has the big old red thing on its head. Oh, that does look like it has the big old red thing on its head. So this is going to be a female. Neat. Yep, female. Great. And then for me, Apom is going to be in not the riverbank. Uh, what's the ground looking one? Apom. Spacious Cave. I think that's the one just north of me. I think I'm walking to it right now. I think this is the Spacious Cave. Yes, spacious Apom, yay, we did it. All right, how close are these two to hatching? It may be close to hatching, it doesn't seem close to hatching. Okay, I have a flame body Pokemon that I traded from my other game. I think this still follows the same concept that when an egg hatches, it will reduce the other eggs hatching rate by one phase, which is equivalent to what, like 500-ish steps, depending on the species. 
So hopefully these two hatch soon. See if we get those back-to-back -back hatches. Shiny luck. I think the eggs that you receive as a gift can be shiny. I don't know. There's our Riolu. Beautiful. And I'm pretty sure that's my full dex. I've now seen 151 Pokemon. Great. I, I have I have like a third of them. I If you are missing any Pokemon that I did not cover in this video, couple of recommendations for you. Go fight all of the trainers in the Pokemon League Victory Road area, okay? Because there's a whole bunch of fully evolved Pokemon in there, and that's going to be a lot of final evolutions and a lot of Pokemon you're missing. And then what else? Go to your Pokedex. If you're missing anything in here, go to Cerebi or Bulbapedia. No, Cerebi's, I, I think Cerebi's fully updated for this game now. So go to Cerebi, look up the Pokemon. It'll have the root, even though it's exactly the same as it was in Diamond and Pearl's original game. So you could look up any 14 year old resource, including, <laughs> including an official strategy guide. By the way, yes, I did buy this thinking it would help me for this game. And it doesn't. It covers no post game or national decks content whatsoever. Pretty useless. Shout out to Prima. I think they're out of business. And then also I have this table for trainer encounters and the trainer encounters are the same as they were, but I haven't easily found a resource online with all the trainers and all the Pokemon there. I'm going to leave links down below to a list of every Pokemon sorted by Sinnoh Dex number on Bulbapedia. Just look up that Pokemon's location, or if it says you have to trade or evolve or something else like that, then there's a good chance it's going to be by a trainer. And I'm going to be including a link to that file that you can download. It's on Google Sheets. I don't know if you can download it or make a copy or something else like that. I didn't make it. Shout out to the person who did. I'm pretty sure they have their name on there. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Once you have a full Pokedex, we are going to go over here to Sandgym Town. Sand Gym Town? Sand Gym Town. We're gonna go talk to Rowan. Hey, you've come to show me your progress on your Pokedex? Yes. Oh, so you've seen 151 Pokemon? By the way, Manaphy, who is the 151st, is not required for the decks. Just saying that. You've recorded all the Pokemon Sinnoh in your Pokedex. This helped me immeasurably with my studies on Pokemon evolution. Yay! Oh my gosh, it's Professor Oak. Womp womp womp. I can't, I can't wait to just open up the floodgate of all the post-game content. Rowan, hey, let me, let me introduce Professor Oak to this kid. Great, now we have the national mode for the national Pokedex. Oh, and Romanus Park is open. I have a feeling that's gonna be a video that we are doing very shortly. Fantastic. And we get the Poke Radar, so now we could shiny hunt things if we wanted to. Isn't that neat? To switch Pokedexes is the R button to go between all 151 in the Sinnoh Dex, and all 490 in the National Dex. He's coded in the game, but currently there's no event to get him. Likewise with Shaman. Don't do the Shaman glitch. We don't know the implications of it. There's a glitch right now to get Shaman, but it's going to be an event. If it's not an event, then yes, I will cover the glitch because you won't care. Oh, there's a hole in the ground. Whoa. Hey, it's Rourke. Hey, it's been a while. Yep, since the last time I got knocked out in the underground. All the gym leaders are really happy for you too. They aren't going to take this line down. Losing to you was rough on all of us. Yet we still have our pride as Sinnoh's eight gym leaders. Now we're all determined to beat you this time. That's right, you can now reface all of the gym leaders and they have some pretty spicy teams. Yes, they do. Oh, that's right. Yeah, if we talk to Dawn's little sister now, she's going to be telling us whenever there's going to be a horde. And then I think you have to speak to her in order to, when you hit the X button, it shows up down there at the bottom. And yeah, that's my tips on completing your local Pokedex and getting the national decks. Welcome to the post game, baby. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm going to make so many videos. I'm going to make so many videos on this post game end game stuff. Cannot wait. No, I can't. Great. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you found it helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're in the post game already, hit the thumbs up button down below. And if you're not in the post game yet, hit the thumbs up button down below. Till next time, Austin John out.